Hi friends, welcome to Sailing Liberty. We're really glad you're back. Just running around the neighborhood here, picking up a few things that blew Ooh. off the dock. Uh, what a blow last night and a bit of a storm surge. I would say the boat is coming along great and in a month we are sailing away. Today on, on Sailing, sailing Liberty. Liberty. As I was going over the cork and carry mountains, I met with Captain Farrell and his money. He was counting. I first produced my pistol and then produced my rapier. Stand and deliver, for you are a bold deceiver. I said, Ooh, do I'm a da. Wait for the daddy o. Wait for the daddy o. There's whiskey in the jar. Since it is holiday season and Yule is coming up, Christmas for you guys, I guess. I got for Ted a really cool present. He plays guitar and I wanted to get him personalized uh, guitar strap. And I think it just arrived to the postal box. I got it from Etsy. <gasps> wow! I think he's gonna be super happy. Okay, it's 100% genuine leather made in US natural leather. I think the guy is in Texas. Thank you for purchase. <laughs> I went with the ACDC kind of lettering. Inside I, got, uh, I put the personalized message and Sailing Liberty logo. Oh, and there is a big holder. This is gonna be his Christmas gift. I'm super happy. Fiddling around with a couple of templates right now, uh, looking at a great way to reinforce our chain plates. They're gonna go right through the gunnel to a backing plate on the other side. And that's gonna be additional strength that backs up the whole system. Plus we'll drill a hole straight through the old chain plate and we're gonna leave this bolt in place and that'll give us connection to the existing chain plate strength make this into a compressive load by bolting below it, by drilling right through the old chain plate. And then we're mm -hmm. gonna have a bolt here and a bolt here into fresh wood and strong fiberglass. Basically, we're adding two more upper bolts to our chain plate through fresh areas with backing plates all the way through. The upper bolt right now only goes part way through and it's fiberglassed in on the inside. So we're not even sure how thick it goes through, but these are going the whole way through. Backing plates, we're gonna add that much more strength right to our system. And I got a feeling it's gonna be better than ever. Give Austin a quick call. Hello? Hey Austin, it's Ted and Helen calling. How's it going? How's it going? Hey, good. We're just out in this beautiful sunshine looking at our templates we're making for these uh, parts we talked about the other day. And uh -huh. uh, wanted to call you guys and see what's what if we could stop over at some point. Yeah. Awesome, cool. Uh, actually, I'll probably drive down there here in a minute. Okay. He's a great welder. He's already taken great care of us with our boat and welding stuff. And when he fixed our bowsprit, he was like, you know, look, I think it's going to be fine, but no guarantees because this is not how you're supposed to do it. But this is how you guys need me to do it. And I'm willing to do it. And he did it. And guess what? We beat the heck out of that bowsprit on a really stormy night. <laughs> Got to catch up on the dishes on a really <laughs> stormy night. And it took a hell of a shock load with the 3 8 chain on 300 feet of chain. Man, we were out 25 feet of water, pounding in a northern breeze. And uh, guess what? Nothing happened. That bowsprit hung in there real nice. So we have a hope in chain plates. Yeah. Wow, this is getting exciting. This is a big project that I have been dreading. So the point is, we don't want to change them because it's just we have to tear out all our furniture and grind fiberglass for weeks. We live in the boat, man. Yeah. <laughs> Engineering wise, Helen wants me to like go through this with you carefully because she trusts your engineering. And what it allows us to do is to put our a fifth and sixth bolt through the gunnel all the way through to a backing plate. And then one more bolt, it'll just go through, drill right through the uh, existing strap. So that compressive load is more forgiving than these tensile loads. But the inner part will still continue to do part of the job. 
the cost and the, and the difficulty in drilling and stuff gets really high. You don't see a lot of rust on them. Even down here, there's not a lot of rust. No, no, I so. personally, if I were you, I'd pop one of these covers off and here. Take a look, and maybe and the wood take too, a look right? and see if what you what you see down in there, yeah. down around the base. Right. Because this boat is, it doesn't seem like it's got a lot of uh, sea time. No, I don't think. Well, tail. we know the last guy that had it, it sat here on the river for 10 years and got went out a few times. And he kept his rigging super loose. It had no load on it. Then I don't think you're going to ever have a problem with it, yeah. in all honesty. Right. Because you're a stainless guy, and you look at the stainless, and this doesn't, you don't worry about that I, at all. I'm not worried about that stainless at all. There's a lot of worrying that goes on with <laughs> sailing. I understand that. When you're out in the middle of the ocean, it's kind of like a, oh, What no. could I worry about? <laughs> Why can I justify my fear yeah. <laughs> with some scientific understanding of my problems? Yep. Uh, trust me, I understand that. But it doesn't look like it has had enough sea time on it no. to be failure. We need to do a little more investigation. Yep. Fair enough, right? Yeah. I'd send me pictures when you guys get to the certain point. Yeah. Just shoot me a couple pictures. Yeah. And, uh, well, I'm going to jump in there and start doing that today. Really? Today? Yeah, today, I'm today. Right now. I want, wow. I'm sick of that area anyway. And yeah. I, this now gives me my. Perfect. Motivation. Yeah, motivation. <laughs> but you're you're a man of good engineering, so I like what I'm hearing. It makes sense to me. Thanks, Austin, for all the great advice. Now we're gonna pop this cap rail off. This project we have been dreading, but we have to do it anyway. It's all leaking in here. We don't know what's the state of the wood or the chain place. It should be the worst uh, place in the boat. Now I'm gonna move the shrouds. Somebody has been shortening it, so it has been a problem before. So this is Helen's first time popping out bungs. Yeah, it's the first time to take a bung out. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> That's, oh, that's kind of rotten. rotten. I didn't know that D can rot. No, the screw head broke off too. Wow. Eesh. Okay, the second one. Yeah, bottom's up. <sighs> a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down, no <laughs> doubt. I'll hold on to this. This way is moving also. Screw head came off? Yeah. It shouldn't be collapsing with the ice pick. No. Oh. It's supposed to be way stronger than that. I guess it comes uh, with the territory when you buy a $10,000 boat. <laughs> yeah, you can't expect everything to be perfect. <laughs> I'll get right to it, boss. Uh, I'll call you when the job's done. <laughs> oh, you missed a bung. You know, a lot of people like to get the job done quick and call it done. Well, this is a yacht. We want to get it done right. And then we're going to call it beautiful. So that's why I got the biggest pry bar in the world and I'm about to tear this cap rail off. But gently, let's see if she comes along. Ah, I can hear something. I'm going to get these trim pieces off of these chain plates and then we're going to bring her up nice and easy. Finesse it. Helen had sealed this one previously because of our leak issues. One step forward and <laughs> one step back. Before you know it, we're going to be square dancing. All right, that's loose. In fact, that's gone. Say hello to my little friend, Richard. Richard Prybar. I might want to come in with the oscillating tool and open this up right here along the seam. I can see there's epoxy here and it's holding pretty strong. It's like the best new tool for the job on a boat. You gotta have one if you're on a boat. sticking a razor blade in there. I mean, I think I might have only cut some glue. Let's see what happens now. What are those bungs in the side? Oh, that's a bung right there. But it's just going in. The, oh, oh, it's, it's going spliced. there. Wow. I might have just cut that or ruined my blade. So if that's like that, it should be somewhere right in here. I think that we found the screw. Hopefully I cut it. I'm gonna give a gentle pry here and see what happens. Yeah, the upper's loose. Take 
this trim plate off. All right, let's see what we got. Wow, everything moves. It's not that bad. The screws are all rotten off. Take a look at this. Whoa, we have an ant nest in there. They're running with their eggs. Yeah, but the chain plate looks pretty good. It's got some airflow around it, which is good. Well, it could look worse, but it doesn't. We've got a fair amount of rot here, uh, but this would probably be squared away and epoxied up and all that stuff. Got an ant farm down here at this chain plate. And you know what? This is good news. You say you want a world cruising yacht and to see the most beautiful places? Well, you get it one, you in the jungle. Good price. You clean up the ants and help them out. Fix up all the rot, and before you know it, it's off to the races. Adventure awaits, and don't hesitate. Mmm. All right, let's see what we got. Let's open this up and take all this goo away from our chain plate to find out if our chain plates are gonna be keepers. I got for my... another season. Good for another season. Or are they? Ooh, should you have protective glasses? You should. Looks pretty darn good. Looks like clean stainless to me. Well, that's some great news. It looks like Austin was right. We might be in okay shape with these chain plates. This is the worst area on the boat for moisture penetration, and uh, chain plates are looking sound. Still got a little bit of a mirror finish there, all the way underneath that epoxy build up there, and a bunch of other sealants or whatever else they had on there. You know what? I think we're gonna be good for one more season. Can I get a high five? Oh yeah. Today I'm soldering again because we want to put up this uh, cool radio because in the morning time when we drink our coffee, then we can listen some music and have all kinds of fun and start our day the right way. In the last time when we were soldering, we didn't know that we have to put the red and yellow wire together and that's why the radio didn't work but now we know because you guys mentioned it in the comment section below and I'm gonna put that XT60 plug on it resin I'm gonna put it all over what's your temperature on that unit? I pulled it off from the... oh to plug that little cutie in. All right, now where were we? I keep mine at 650. Let me heat up the bars first. Okay, now it has to cool down and then the other one. Wow, I got it. The electrical connection is made. The boot is on, it's pretty good. And uh, the first loudspeaker is also connected. The boat came with the loudspeakers, we are not sure if they work, so we used the uh, temporary connections on the first one, and um, if it works we're gonna do a better job, but now it's gonna be like that, and I'm gonna connect the second loudspeaker, left plus, okay, I'm gonna go plus to plus. That's my first time I did it alone. Oh yeah? Yeah. Well, you're gonna be our electrical. Wow. Last connection. You're learning all about it. Power up. Ooh, it's working. Don't mind if I do. I hear sound on that side. What about this side? Oh. I don't hear anything there. Well, it's working, but we're not getting any sound out of this speaker. So, 
we hopefully we have a good crimps and everything's wired well, but let's just see if we have any voltage here. It's always good to meter and see where the problem lays. I'm not sure how to do this. I'm not showing any voltage here. Boat's got a lot of little projects and there's a lot of them. But here we are so. snipping, snipping wires. I don't know, we're just gonna do it over. Okay. Well, first thing we're gonna do is just restrip the ends and just touch the ends together. When in doubt, just hot wire it. It's working. Is it? Woohoo! All right. That's awesome. We have working radio. Why do you what think we did was? the wrong? I think because we didn't clean up the old. Uh, they were really crusty. They were crusty. Always clean up the old crusty wires. You know, the <laughs> years and years of roach piss, you know, and uh, leaky deck fittings, it's kind of. It's gonna affect the sound quality. Everything works. That's gonna be it for this motor. We decided we're getting another motor. We're gonna quick weigh this one so we can have a point of comparison. Hey boss, if it falls, I won't tell anybody if you won't. I don't think we'll even notice. How do you know how to use the thing? Way to fish for some guy. <laughs> he took a picture and everything. <laughs> Guess you had to be there. All right, that's it. She weighs 45 pounds. Oh, it's fluffy. It's fluffy. fluffy. Hey, you two cuties. So tomorrow we're lucked out. We're gonna help a friend. We're gonna drive him to the airport. We drive a lot of people to the airport. And on the way back, we're gonna get to stop off at the uh, outboard store and possibly buy something. So we're trying to make a decision today. Caramel macchiata. You want to sip? It's a dessert, but you have it for breakfast. We dropped our friend off to the airport and now we are enjoying a nice morning coffee. Jumping in with both feet. We're gonna go to the marine place and get our outboard right now. We did some basic research, better basic research than no research, and we go with the six horsepower um, Tohatsu. Yeah. They have a great price too. The price is incredible and it's gonna be enough power and it's not too heavy. So that's the main criteria. Yes, we are eight minutes away, so let's, let's go. Let's drive. We are in Northeast Marine and we are about to get our outboard. Super expensive, so you could also check a Did different brand. Nice. You happy, sweetie? Yep. So that's our key to fun. Thanks to Hatsu, number one dealer in America in the world. And we have our all accessories, spare parts, our fluids, and I think we got some good advice too. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Have a good time. Bye. Bye. Woo! Why do we keep smiling? <laughs> now we are officially a little less scramblers. We have a beautiful engine. Woo! Next stop, to lunch.
This old tin boat washed up somewhere and a friendly boater stopped by and dropped it off. Turned out it used to be a friend of mine. He said, you know what? He's trying to get rid of it. So we're gonna clean it up real quick. I'm gonna reinforce the tran transom here and put on a couple of bolts to hold it together with a, um, some butyl rubber. Seal this little cutie up and we're gonna try out our new outboard. Yeah, it's a 14 foot tin boat, but it's the right size for the motor. We decided to go with the six horsepower instead of the 3.5 or 2.5 or whatever it is um, that would actually work on our dinghy because our dinghy's too small. We need a boat that we can take our bikes on, groceries, supplies. 14 foot is probably too big, so we're looking for a new dinghy. Wow. We might. You know, if we like this thingy, we're gonna keep it for a while. We might just redo these boards real quick from some scraps around here and uh, give it a quick coat of paint so it looks a little bit more respectable. But for today, just getting ready for our test drive and see what we think. This old Tim boat actually has a pretty nice reinforced transom and I uh, just gotta make sure it doesn't leak too much. When you got a new outboard, you can hope that there'll be no problems, at least at first. So this is what we're hoping. That's why we got a new outboard. But before we get this thing running, we gotta do two major things. We gotta add in some gear oil into the lower unit, and we gotta put in engine oil into the engine. Shouldn't take long, but we're gonna jump on the water. Okay, put the screw in, would you? First up. The one on the left, yep. Like a, you know, you put your finger over the straw. The sun is setting and we are ready to put our boat in the water. Woo! It's been a long time coming. And here we come. I figure this is how the Vikings used to do it. Just <laughs> roll it on a log. Woo! Tough as nails, because it's made of the same thing as nails, metal. Okay. Get some! Oh, I don't see any water coming in. Let's get that motor on there. It's Can you pull in a little closer? Just a little bit. Okay, now push away a little bit. Yeah, you're on. Is it looking? Check it. Yeah. Okay. That looks centered up, but not quite. Oh, it's not in here. Can you pull it over a little bit? Right there. That looks good. Well, that went on pretty great. High tide doesn't hurt one bit, does it? Awesome, good job, sweetie. Let's get this sucker started and see what happens. We are getting it working. A reverse, neutral, forward. Is, uh, is it tight enough? Oh, yeah, you got it. You did it. You got it plenty. And did you have to uh, nope, put them? No, they're good. They're okay. tight. They're fine. Let's try that again. There is some uh, red light coming on. I think that shows that we're getting spark. Okay. So, oh, we don't have any gas. We gotta put gas in this thing. We haven't put any gas in here. Oh my gosh. Nobody's perfect and we proved that many times. So. <laughs> we forget the gas. Let me get some gas. Oh, I'll be back in just a second. <laughs> How embarrassing. What are you gonna do? Live TV. All gassed up and ready to go. Neutral. And there's the choke I'm working. Oh. Our fuel switch is in storage cutoff position, so I'm gonna have to fix that. Here, let's try it that way. Now, yeah, it'll start right up on the first pull, all gassed up and ready to go. <laughs> Plus, you gotta put the throttle in start position. Everyone knows that. All gassed up and ready to go. Probably start on the first pull. <laughs> Whoa, nice. Careful out there. Okay. Okay. You ready? You gonna shut the off? Yeah.
Well, the motor works and we are really happy. I got a feeling when we tear it open, it's going to go really fast with this setup and it's not going to use barely a drop of gas. Thank you for watching. See you next time. On Sailing Liberty. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you like, comment. And please subscribe. We're a new channel. Every subscription counts. Thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you on the next show. Sailing Liberty. Arr, boy, arr. Charge you scallywags. Aye, aye, Captain. Like any great adventure, it begins with a girl and a sword. Before you know it, the tail twists into a t-shirt. Hey, click in the link below in description box and get one of our shirts. Bye now and join the adventure.